All right, what's going on, guys? I uh, told you I'd have an update coming. Um, there was a lot more changing than I thought on this Thrust Vector kit. Um, I was kind of trying to use the good old Chinese English uh, <laughs> um, instructions here to kind of help me get through it, but the instructions are specifically designed um, for the uh, RC Lander F16 which I, I knew that's what this come, came off of, but it happened to be the exact diameter that I needed for mine, so I've got it set up. Um, I went ahead, trying to keep it in frame, I'm grabbing stuff for you here. I went ahead and did the hardest part, which was hacking off the, the th end of the thrust tube of the kit. Um, I did a very clean cut, though. I used the actual uh, natural seam um, of the plane, Anyways, where the two halves epoxied together when I was building it, um, I, I just split those halves basically where the epoxy was. Um, that way, if for any reason I ever wanted to return this back to normal, um, I can. But there's also a possibility that after the system is in, they did this with the F-16, um, but I'm going to see what all I'll have to do that I may be able to get part of that thrust tube back on. Um, now, I went ahead and cut... The spot, the slot here. Um, this slot will take this little plywood piece here. This is a uh, measures 30 millimeters. Now it will be flush, but only 15 millimeters of it are going to show. I've cut a groove in there, which I'm still going to hollow out some more. This will actually slide in and be flush. Um, once that has slid in, get the control horn out of the way here. Um, I'll be able to start getting this all mounted up. Okay, and start. I figured out where my servos are going to go. I've chosen the servos I'm going to use for it. Um, the uh, left or the up down my elevator for the thrust vectoring is going to go right here. Um, control horn is going to come out basically. Oh, let me see. It's going to come out basically right here um, on the. Uh, this is the top, by the way. I've got it upside down. It's going to come out right here, and I've got a real nice uh, control horn, horn cover and a control rod cover that I'm going to paint up, uh, probably silver or black, if I decide to paint there. And uh, that is going to come back, and we'll hook in to this control horn here. Well, actually, I already have the control horn and the wire bent up, but come in and it'll hook to that. Um, that control there is what will give me my, let's see, that one will give me, make sure I have it pointed the right way here, guys. Okay, yeah. Uh, there we go. Let's see, that's the up, down, and that's the yeah, left, right. That'll give me my uh, left, right swivel once my little brackets there are mounted in. Um, so that'll give me my left, right swivel. And then the one push rod that I'll have coming through the top. If you notice here, I, took, I went ahead and took the fan out just because it's going to be so much easier. Um, now, normally, this is where my wires come in for my ducted fan from the speed control. Also, that push rod right there is the uh, rudder push rod. So what I did was I went ahead and ran in the push rod on this side, which will act as the rudder push rod for the uh, thrust vector, and that is where that will come out. Um, I've already fit that in there, got that all cleared. It fits perfect. Couldn't be happier with it, actually. Um, so I've already got that, uh, that control rod set. Um, I've just got to go in right here, and what I'm going to do here is basically level out the foam here with this plywood plate is all I'm gonna have to do and I may have to take a little bit off in here nothing above this line here because that will if I did that that would affect uh, the hatch going back on which goes on like that okay and snaps in with magnets so this it'll look like nothing has been done here um, you'll take this off and right inside here of course I will have to trim some on the hatch also but on the inside the only time you're ever going to see anything is if you manage to take this off and actually once everything's done I put this on and I run um, high grade industrial scotch tape and this isn't stuff you can really pick up this is stuff you got to order um, but this is very it has a very high stencil strength on it so it I mean, you literally can't even rip it off the roll. You have to cut it with an X-Acto knife. So I usually put my hatch on and put that around the hatch just to, just to secure it off and make sure there's no leaks. So I'm going to go ahead and cut that area. I'll cut a hole 
at the very base here, the, the actual top of the ser servo horn will go into the foam and the control rod will come out right down in here and then I'll be able to control my uh, my up down on the thrust vectoring. Um, I went ahead and got my thrust tube in. Um, it is measured with the FSA method. It is uh, actually no smaller than 15 percent or sorry 15, 83 percent of my uh, 70 millimeter shroud. Actually it's quite a bit bigger than that. I'm well within the lenience there because of this the closer you get your thrust tube to the limit, the 83% limit, the more speed you're going to get, but the less thrust you're going to get. Now that will do me no good with the thrust vector kit, so I went with as wide as I could go. Um, and as you can see, I've already got the ring epoxied on, um, and my uh, Luxion lights are going to go through each hole here, um, basically. But they're going to be—they're still going to be flush. I'm going to bury them in there. Somehow, don't ask me how yet, uh, but I'm going to bury them in there to get that afterburner effect on there and find some way to cover that up. Um, but until I do that, I'm basically just going to run a combination, guys. Oh, if I don't drop them all here, a combination of uh, these are just turnigy. I have a oh about a two or three foot uh, string board of very bright blue LEDs and very bright red LEDs and I've already actually already got the blue that's this is the red I believe yeah this is the red I've already got the actual diameter cut um, and what I'll do is I don't want to put it close to the end here I don't want you people to be able to see the LEDs but it will be right here behind the ducted fan um, it does double back so real easy to put in take out um, and I'll just run some wires through that same hole up in and put in a separate brushed speed control um, don't really want to do brushless and you don't really want to plug it into your current speed control you can run into some problems there so I'm gonna put in a separate little brush speed control I have from a plane back in the 80s I got like three or four of GWS little speed controls so uh, I'm gonna use that to give it the afterburner effect because I noticed that the blue and red just make an awesome afterburner effect. I, I, I mean, I love the guys' videos online. Everybody has the blue or everybody has the red, but if you can really tell the guys that have mixed the blue, red, and actually white. If you put those three together, it's an amazing effect. You can see during the daytime. Um, the inside of my tailpipe here is going to be completely coated um, with, if I can find it here, yeah, right here. Uh, this is very reflective and very light um, aluminum tape very thin but it is actually aluminum and I will cover the whole inside area there all the way to the fan with that tape so when my lights are in there and mounted not only will you be getting the reflection from the tape inside the uh, thrust tube here but also the brushed aluminum uh, 360 nozzle so what I'm getting ready to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, finish gutting out I've got 15 millimeters here and I've got to go 15 millimeters in that you're not going to see. And I'm going to go ahead and epoxy in both the bottom and the top uh, tabs. Once those are epoxied in, I can actually go ahead and uh, fit my unit in there. Um, and a lot of you may think I'm doing this backwards because my servos aren't in yet. But I want the unit on there and I want to be able to move it with my hands in every which way, in every direction, and in every throw I want before I place any servo. If I place a servo first, that could limit me on, on how I want to mount it. So all I did was make sure that I'm exactly uh, in the exact circle with my thrust tube and that is completely flush all the way around. It feels great. Um, you can, almost can't even tell it it goes from a thrust tube to, to the actual uh, foam. So uh, got that in there. That, that's already dried up. Just use five minute epoxy on that and get the tabs in there and uh, well keep driving on um, and while I got it upside down I'm gonna go ahead and, and put in my new uh, digital I'm gonna go ahead and just basically uh, cut these about right here and I'm gonna go ahead and just solder in um, I'm not gonna pull these leads out uh, they're a pain they actually are inside the tube way in there in this little ring on the side wall and it is a pain in the ass to get that wire out and I solder and cut and reverse servos all the time. It's not a big deal at all, guys. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these about right here. And I've got a bunch of extra plugs. Uh, now plugs, basically plugs left over from, 
you know, all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to basically put a plug on there. So at any time, if I ever need to change out the servos, I'll just be able to unplug it in the future and pop it out and pop another one in. So uh, that's what we got going on tonight. A lot of work, but uh, I'll have some cool videos up. Hopefully I'll get the uh, I'll get the thrust tube done tonight, and hopefully I'll get the uh, afterburner effect done and tied in with my uh, uh, speed control through the uh, a Y connector on my receiver and that'll basically give me the ability to have the lights go from real dim to very bright at full throttle it'll also give me the option to program um, if I have any spaces left after the thrust vectoring if I do I'll be able to program in um, basically when the lights kick on so I'm you know I may not have them kick on till 50 percent throttle 75 percent throttle and then they'll just go from 75 dim to 100 max uh, capacity on brightness and uh, it should look pretty good. Um, I got a real little battery here compared to what I run them in, guys. But uh, I'll show you if I can about how bright these are. Um, and don't hook these up at home like I'm doing. This is very stupid, but uh, I'm known to do that kind of stuff. Um, basically, get the uh, ground in there. See if I can do this with one hand. And the power in there. And there we go. Um, and I've been using this battery to run electronics on all day, so it's it's pretty out of there. But those are the red. Um, they look awesome. And when they're fully powered through my speed control, they are very bright. Not as bright as the uh, uh, Luxons that I'm buying, but, but they'll work for now. So I'll get that put in and get you guys some updates coming here in a little bit. Um, if you have any questions or anybody's want to know about this kit, how to get it, where to get it, how to install it, stuff like that, uh, hit me up, leave me a comment, leave me a message, whatever. I'll be here playing around. I have my phone next to me. It's got the YouTube app on it, so I'll hear you guys chiming in. But, uh, alright guys, thanks.